Welcome to the Avail Podcast, where we dig deep and talk about the art of leadership. My name is Virgil Sierra, and today we're sitting down with Dave Almgren. Dave has over 20 years experience as a youth pastor, as well as 15 years in retail sales. He's also worked on numerous grassroots audience engagement marketing campaigns with the firm and Provident Films, Sony Pictures Animation, Fox, Lionsgate, the Irwin Brothers, the Kendrick Brothers, and many more. In this conversation, Dave will share about how he provides strategic implementation and execution of church ministry engagement strategies to help churches impact their communities for Christ using the media of the day. So lean in, leaders, and let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Avail podcast, where we talk about the art of leadership with leaders, with pastors, ministry, marketplace leaders, people who are leading in all kinds of areas, making an impact for the kingdom. And today we have the blessing, the privilege, the honor of connecting with David Almgren, who has uh, experience in a little bit of all the areas, ministry as a pastor, uh, in the media, sales, and really making this connection between media, creative arts, and the kingdom of God. David, it's an honor to have you as a guest here on the Avail Podcast. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. Thank you, Virgil. It's exciting to be here to share a little bit about my journey, my story, and man, just excited to dive into this the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Yes, sir. Well, I think you are a very, very interesting leader, um, and I think that your voice is very important uh, for the kingdom of God in, in this time, the times that we're living in. Before we before we jump into the, the heart of the conversation today, um, I, I would love for you to just share a little bit with our Avail audience about who you are, some of your experience, and what led you to where you are today. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I hail from Portland, Oregon, born and raised. Um, I didn't really grow up in the church, didn't get saved until I was 19. So, um, you know, that's, there's some good and bad to that. Um, <laughs> um, definitely. But uh, so grateful that God rescued me um, out of a, a lifestyle that, um, you know, was destined for anywhere but heaven and where God intended me to end up. So uh, my journey has been very interesting. And um, man, at 19, I was, I was lost, had no direction. And, um, the Lord began to uh, unveil kind of uh, a plan and what he wanted me to do. And I went to Bible college. I was a church planter, was a children's pastor for a number of years, and a junior high pastor, loved, loved ministry of, uh, in the local, of the, in the local church that is. And, um, you know, in the in early two thousands, I launched out to start a, a retail store selling products like veggie tales, uh, to really <laughs> equip families and, um, you know, what, what better brand to associate with? And uh, who doesn't love Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber, right? <laughs> yes. All right, let's yes, sing yes. that all together. If No, I won't make, <laughs> you, I won't make you sing the, the theme song. But you probably know it by heart if you've got kids. But um, but anyway, so, you know, I worked in the retail space, had a pastoral background, reached, uh, worked in the retail space. And then just doors, unexpected doors opened up for me to kind of jump into the film world and um, in 2007 or so, and I worked on the VeggieTale Pirates movie um, with Universal Studios and with grassroots uh, experience with the church and retail. Uh, that's how I kind of launched mm. into uh, the, the, the movie space and mm. married, married the pastoral with the retail with um, really becoming a pastor of, with a different pulpit. Um, wasn't mm-hmm. the local church anymore, but it was encouraging the church and equipping the church to reach their community and to use the media of the day to uh, impact their community for Christ. So here we are today, you know, in what, man, I thought was maybe a one-off has become, you know, a 15-year career ministry. Wow. Uh, I had no idea, you know, and and I'm just, I just, this just came to mind, you know, I had, Sorry if I get emotional, but, you know, prior to that time, I I was, there was a part of my life where I had severed my Achilles, Hmm. daughter with Down syndrome that was born, and, you know, all the trappings that come with that, and meaning uh, just the unknowns. Yeah. And and then ministry was changing for me, 
and I had a, a, a situation happen in my life where um, I just doubted what I was doing and others didn't speak into my life that they believed in me as well. Wow. So it was really, that was a turning point where I had no idea what I was going to do. <clears throat> Ministry seemed like it wasn't going to happen any longer. Hmm. And, um, and it began to take some risks and step out and do retail. And this door with film opened up. Um, and I, during that time I went through some, uh, man, severe anxiety. And I had, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, mm. uh, but it was a desperate time. And now I look for, look back and God really helped me to find my purpose in the midst of that, that pain and that loss of what I thought my purpose was and where I was supposed to be. But he carved a, he carved a new opening for me to, to be where I am today. And man, I just, I love what I'm doing and I love the platform that I have and get to uh, work on projects that are so much bigger than me that uh, I get to see them impact the world. I love that. I think it's, that's so cool that you share that David, because I think, uh, well, it takes a little bit of vulnerability and openness to say, man, it, it's hard. But but beginning to see God's fingerprints on the journey that maybe you would have never you probably wouldn't have planned it out the way it's nope. gone. No, nope. but but at the same time, realizing, man, God is in this. Um, I think that's something that we all, especially as leaders, that we we need to feel we need to have those moments. So I love your voice and your testimony in this. Um, I, I'm intrigued with our conversation today because I think. Uh, I think it's going to add value to so many leaders, especially leaders in the church. Um, so, so here's your heart from, from, from your experience as a pastor, from your experience in sales, from your experience with just getting somehow connected to the media world and, and Christian movies and all yeah. these things. So here's your heart from what you explained to me. You want to help churches and pastors use the media of the day in a way that points people to the kingdom of God. So can you just unpack that? What does that mean? And how did this come up? Um, well, I've, you know, I've always, even when I was back as a kid's pastor and junior high pastor, I always, I always tried to employ um, as many tools as possible because I was always taught the more senses you um you engage, yeah. Uh, the more likely that message is going to stick. So it's you good. know, the, the audio, the touch, the feel, um, the eyes, everything. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, as as my journey is um, has evolved and gotten involved in in different types of media, not just in a kids' church setting, but in a in a movie <clears throat> in a movie setting where you've got these films that can really impact culture and they can, uh, they can um, really move people emotionally to a place of action. So, so I kind of, as I was looking at history uh, in film, you know, I discovered that, you know, Pinewood Studios, um, London, that started in 1920. And it started out of the desire of a mission groups and Sunday school teachers to create content because they didn't like what was being created and it wasn't family friendly. So they started Pinewood London. And we know that, uh, you know, that's where James Bond and a lot of the big films are done these days. And they started Pinewood mm -hmm. Atlanta. And so, you know, to some degree, they've tried to retain some of that early vision, but um, some of that. Some of that's not there anymore, but you had Pinewood London, you had the Salvation Army and what they did to use the film of the day, the media of the day to, with film to impact uh, culture and, and reach their audience. You had Amy Simple McPherson, who she would use uh, illustrated sermons. And Charlie Chaplin and others would come to Angela's Temple to see what she was doing and how she was telling stories. Um, and then you've got Billy Graham and Worldwide Pictures and their advent of film. And, you know, they actually set up studios down the street from Burbank back when they started. And they were trying to impact culture because they knew story could move the needle. It could impact mm -hmm. culture. It could move people from A to B emotionally. And then you had uh, the Kendricks came on. Uh, on the scene with um, facing the giants. And I think the Kendricks really kind of kicked open the door for um, a lot of these other filmmakers 
that we see today um, that are telling stories in all different kinds of, of ways. And, um, mm. and so, you know, out of that study of history, out of my own desire to effectively teach um, and to see people impacted by story and knowing that, man, if somebody can get in a, in a theater and hear a story and it'll move them emotionally, um, uh, I think we can, it can be a win for everybody and the kingdom of God will be impacted and that person's life will be changed. And, and so you can, I can give you a few examples of, you know, yeah. October baby came out. There yeah. were, you know, and it's, it's fun to be on the backside mm-hmm. of these, these um, projects because I hear the stories um, from the filmmakers about the impact October baby, that movie went around the world. Uh, because of its success in the U.S., and mm. so there were there were mother young girls that changed their mind. They were went into the movie planning on getting an abortion, came out the other side of the film and changed their mind. Um, there was the movie Woodlawn, where football teams came to that movie, and there were altar calls at the end of the uh, end of the film, and young people, young football players that came gave their life to Christ. Um, I mean, with Jesus Revolution, there were impromptu baptisms in the in the wow. mall fountains where people were so moved they were getting baptized as soon as they came out of the theater. And people were going to the movie and they were turning to their neighbor after the movie was over and said, do you know Christ? Uh, mm. In one movie, oh, sorry, I'll probably get emotional a few times through this, but <laughs> I love this one. I can only imagine. Wow. The movie ended. Um, a lady turned around to the second row and said, are you guys Christians? And the couple said, yes. And she said, I want what that, I want what Dennis Quaid's character has in that movie. And mm. they prayed with her and she accepted the Lord. Wow. Uh, you know, those, th- those are the stories that fuel what I do in this space and the, what make it uh, worth the effort and the challenge and uh, all that we have to deal with on on rolling out a film to uh, to the marketplace. It's those stories that just, you know, make an impact for me and keep me moving forward, knowing that people's lives are changed because that movie uh, was seen uh, around the world by people um, and their lives are never the same as a result. That's so good. Uh, <clears throat> there's something powerful, and 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 I'll speak. I'll speak as a pastor who has been able to leverage because of good, you know, examples of other churches and pastors uh, has been able to leverage media in a way that's impacting both in the theaters, even even in church with series like sermon series, like at the movie series, where where yeah. you're able to have these stories really make an impact, um, inviting people to hey, go check this out. We're supporting. Um, you know, movies that are really going to benefit the kingdom. Um, and obviously there, there may be, there may be positions or opinions out there. Well, let's, that's all the work. That's the world. You know, let's not bring the world into the church. You know, what would you just say to someone who maybe isn't, isn't clear on, uh, on that, on how impacting media and movies specifically can be on a person's life? <clears throat> You know, I've heard it said that more people go to go to a movie on a given weekend that do darken the door of church. And so mm-hmm. um, we've got we've got a lot of people that um, may never come to church with you, but they may come to a film at a theater that's a neutral setting. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of these films are conversation starters. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Jesus' revolution was more on the nose with the gospel presented in the story. But a lot of the stories are are really um, um, conversation starters to have conversations about spiritual That's spiritual good. things and spiritual li- in, in people's lives. And I think we're all, I mean, we're, we all have that God-shaped vacuum that, that mm-hmm. you know, in the square peg in the round hole is what we're trying to fill it with. But um how many don't even know that there's a square peg to fit in that square hole in yeah. a conversation um, at a movie might open up the opportunity to have a conversation and, and lead people to a place of understanding. So um, I would say, mm-hmm. pastor, um, you know, there's your people are going to movies, right? Um, <laughs> you're supporting films. Um, they're, 
the the Kurt Kendrick brothers, the Erwin brothers with Kingdom Story Company, uh, affirm. You know, I know all these players, and I know their heart, and I know that their heart is, um, you know, it's not it's not to build their bank accounts. It's to, you know, pay for the product so they can keep making more films. But it's their heart is to is to really share stories that will move people closer to Christ. And so I would say to the pastors that are listening today, um, embrace those opportunities um, that these studios, um, that these folks are creating, use those stories to impact your community, to uh, drive your congregation to, because they're going to the movies anyway. They're going Mm -hmm. to see John Wick. They're going to see this other stuff. Um, um, Embrace it. Teach on it. Um, Talk about it. Talk about it and how it impacts culture. I mean, Jesus Revolution, you know, it was trending opening weekend um, nationally, and it, it got the attention of a lot of people that were talking about Jesus. I mean, if you look at the first, who we had, we had the popularity of the chosen. We had this NFL player drop on the, the field. The whole stadium becomes a prayer meeting. We have uh, Asbury happening. And it's spreading to you know twenty eight plus college campuses around the country, and then we have a movie about Jesus Revolution that comes out, and you've got Jesus's name is on the lips of a lot of people, and yeah. um, and, and if churches should take should have taken advantage of of that elevation of the conversation about Jesus, it's on everybody's lips. They're hearing about it. Let's talk about it because I think really. Um, People are looking for authenticity. They're looking for something that's real. They don't. They don't want something fake. Yeah. Uh, and I think if if we can deliver um, answers to those questions that people have using the media of the day, I think um, we're going to see people respond beyond our expectations. And um, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought there, but I think. <laughs> No, I think you're, I think you're nailing it on the head. I, I think I think it's important to realize this is another tool. I mean, no 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 worker works with just one tool. This is a tool yeah. that we can include in our toolbox. And I wanted to also mention. I think you have an advantage in that you were a youth pastor in a season of your life. Yeah. And when you're when you're when you're wanting to make an impact on the younger generations, you have to also understand what reaches them. What impacts them can you speak to that i mean do you see do you see just just today's generation um i mean we want to reach everybody but even even today's younger generation that is so um used to and connected to media i mean this is this is a prime way to connect with them would you agree you don't want to miss this month at avail or any month for that matter why because each month the avail online leadership series happens a live call with leaders from around the world who have a passion for god and key leadership insights to impart to you interact with authors pastors and influencers from every industry and the best part it's free to get registered right now head over to theartofleadership.com what are you waiting for Absolutely. And I, you know, if you look historically at some of these films, you know, I'll, I'll get on a campaign and we'll, they'll say, well, this, this film's going to hit this target audience. Um, you know, and more times than not, I'll see where God will take that film and he'll multiply it and he'll reach, I mean, like War Room, uh, there were teenagers and in, in middle schoolers that loved that movie. Um, and uh, Woodlawn and other films that kind of speak to, yeah, stories that resonate with them, you know, it definitely doesn't reach everybody. But, you know, uh, I think in the space we need, you know, there could be criticism about styles. Um, well, I don't like that that particular style of those folks, but I like this better. And I always say a rising tide raises all boats. We need all types of storytellers because, uh, you know, we're going to have different tastes in the type of stories that we like. Um, for example, uh, tomorrow, a movie called Nefarious is, hits theaters nationwide. Now, Nefarious is in the spirit of um, Screw Tape Letters, and if you've read Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, you know that that's a uh, it's a little bit different take on um, presenting truths from the Bible. And sure. Nefarious plays right into that. So it's you've got you've got uh, a very unique 
style of telling a story in Nefarious, and it's a psychological thriller. It's not what you'd think and expect from this space, but uh, as people have seen this movie in pre-screenings and at the uh, world premiere last week in Dallas, uh, people love it. Um, and it. And one person said today, you watch this movie and it, it, the end isn't the end because it causes you as an individual to reflect and think, and it stays with you. It's still yeah. with me, even though I'm working on the film, I'm still contemplating what am I saying yes to? Mm -hmm. And so I think I say, bring up that in regards to your question about um, younger people, nefarious mm -hmm. is going to play to that, you know, college age, young adult crowd, that teenage crowd um, that likes that genre of film. And, but they're going to be hit right square in the face with the truths of the gospel and with um, um, elements of, you know, what are they saying yes to? Because part of the, part of the narrative of the story is, um, the adversary has a plan and a scheme and, uh, and how he's trying to keep people from Christ. And, and it all boils down to what do we say yes to? And what do we, what do we say no to, but what do we say yes to mm -hmm. that opens the door for the adversary to come in like a flood and to destroy and kill and, and to steal. So I think that particular movie is one that's, you know, right, right today, um, April 14th, it's going to be uh, appealing mm -hmm. to the crowd. Um, yeah. But it's important, it's important, as your point, um, um, young people are on media and they're watching it uh, um, and consuming it in, in all different platforms and, and uh, different kind of content. But I think, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're definitely in this space um, and as pastors that are watching this, utilizing the media of the day to to speak to that age group um to bring content that moves the needle and brings them to christ can you give and, and in a second i want to kind of get a little personal with you and i i want to hear your heart on a few things but but before that can you can you give i mean you've mentioned a few but can you can you give a few tangible practical examples um of how pastors and church leaders can do this, how, how they can connect the media of the day with the calling of preaching the gospel. Like, like what are, what are just some practical ways? Hey, this is an idea. Here's another idea. Yeah. Here's some thoughts. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I just, I've been having some conversations with new hope church in Oahu and, uh, they're actually starting, um, they're starting back up their small groups after COVID and they're adding one that's an affinity group because it's based upon, you know, interests. And so they're, uh -huh. they're starting one that uh, is going to be built around film. So that's a simple way to bring uh, folks that are interested in that um, in a small group setting within the church. And then cool. their goal is to inspire other churches to do that throughout the island. Um, and, and they're part of New Hope that's got, you know, 40 40, 50 campuses on the West Coast and in Oahu. So that, that's one simple example. And then, you know, that just grows, the vision grows out of that. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, there was a movie called To Save a Life and it came out a few years ago and a pastor in Fairbanks um, really was inspired to be available for young people that want to see the movie. And it was uh, had a theme about um, teen, teen suicide was part of the, some of the thread storyline threads. And so he made himself available at each showtime every day for the, for as long as it was in theaters. Um, and he brought a table in and worked with the theater and had suicide prevention materials and wow. people. So he took real ownership of that particular theater in his town to um, address mm -hmm. the, the challenge and um, the needs of, in his community that we're those that were dealing with suicidal. And so that's another thought. Um, you know, there's, there's every film kind of has a different on-ramp, you know, yeah. there's sports films that, um, um, where churches really got involved with, you know, movies like when the game stands tall and woodlawn football movies, and they engaged and reached out to local football, their local football teams. Um, I personally, you know, at my, uh, alma mater at Grand High School is about five blocks from me. So um, I teamed up with a local church 
that's uh, just down the street. And we teamed up to buy a ticket for every junior high or a JV and varsity football player to come to see the film. So we teamed up. Uh, I teamed up with the church and we, we got to go after one practice at uh, midfield and uh, let them know that you know, we were inviting them to the movie and that your, their tickets were paid for. And then we had t-shirts and many footballs and stuff. So we were using that to build a bridge yeah. with the local high school. Um, and then um, the local SCA guys were there and just gave them some momentum uh, by using this tool of the film to reach the high schoolers and, and kind of um, really uh, establish a beachhead in that particular school. Um, I know with Jesus Revolution, there was, uh, um, well, go back to War Room, a lot of a lot of prayer focus came out of that film. Yeah. It really inspired people to pray, um, inspired churches to pray and to, to really make that front and center. So it gave them a vehicle to teach on that and to bring up, uh, elevate the importance of prayer within their congregation and to see the impact of prayer um, in their congregation. So those are a few examples of uh, some films in the past. And, um, you know, and, and people can, churches get as creative as they want. Uh, you know, I'll give one more example. The Star was an animated film that came out a few years ago from Fox and Devon Franklin. Um, uh, and a lot of churches utilize that to do a family outing. And so the families went to the film. Um, they kind of created a whole event um, for families that uh, was pre and post. They had some party afterwards. There was a lot of ancillary uh, items that um, that the studio had created for the churches to utilize, you know, to be able to show the film and then do a follow up series one, two, three weeks afterwards. So there's there's a lot of creativity. Depends on the film. <laughs> depends on the subject matter. Depends on the hooks and um, and churches get can really get as creative as they want in utilizing those films um, as exampled in the past. And you know, moving forward, there's there's a there's still a lot of content coming and a lot of great stories still to be told. Yeah, I love it. I'm hearing a lot of just creativity when I when I read through the Gospels and I see how Jesus many times presented the gospel and and preached and taught. Um, he was different than the religious institution of the day. He, yeah. he captured people's attention. He, yeah. he used stories, parables, right? That, that, that are stories to get people kind of hooked into an idea, a thought, but then they brought a truth. They brought a moral teaching, a spiritual lesson. And, and I can't help but see that in so many of these Christian movies that you're mentioning and, and yeah. Christian media. I mean, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just got off a call with, uh, production company uh, about a movie called The Soldier. And uh, man, just I'm, I'm excited about this one. It'll be out maybe 24 or 25. And it's um, it's a unique story, a unique telling of a similar story um, of the resurrection through um, some characters that we don't typically see their full backstory. And uh, the old, it it brings some humanity to mm. um, the story that, similar to how what you probably feel if you watch The Chosen, you know, there's yeah. time through the story to breathe and the characters to develop. And this this story called The Soldier, um, I think, is really lends itself to that type of a story where, or that type of a, a presentation of a story where you get to see some backstory that we don't typically see. And the ultimate takeaway and theme of this movie is about forgiveness. And uh, I'm excited for, I'm excited for that film. And, and there's a lot more coming that just are going to be great, great <laughs> opportunities for the church to engage with and to see their, um, their communities impact to these stories. Yeah, that's good. Uh, before David, before we, we, kind of let people know how they can connect with you, learn more about you and your, the way you're using these tools and ministry. Um, I, I want to just finish with this thought. Um, what an, what an unlikely arrival to where you're at. What, 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 a what a unique story, which, which reminds me that God's story for all of us can look so different, yeah. but I know that's something that you mentioned, like who, you know, who would have thought, 
that this is where you'd be and doing what you do. Can you can you just encourage some pastors and some leaders right now? And because yeah. we're, we're we're in all kinds of different seasons of our lives. Oh, some some yeah. beginning ministry, planting a church. Some on their way out, transitioning, you know, and passing on the baton. Uh, some transitioning to a different sphere, uh, you know. And, and you're, I think you could speak to this. What an unlikely arrival to where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. You said it well. Um, not not a place that I planned on being. You know, as I looked uh, over the horizon, in, uh, you know, in 2000. Um, so uh, God, God's got your back. And I, and I don't want to come off hard. It's just cliche here at all. But because um, if somebody would have said maybe some of these things to me back in 2000, I might have said, OK, yeah, right. But <laughs> um, and after of living through and seeing time and again how man, God has is, is got your back and he's, he's promises. They may not come to pass tomorrow, but as I've seen God, um, God's got your back and, he, and those promises will come to pass one day. Um, and we just have to be patient and um, willing to just trust God. And that's easier said than done, man. I'm, especially for me, it's, I want, I plan, I pro, you know, I want to know, I want to know what things are going to look like and be able to plan <laughs> and foresee and to have the, the future uncertain. is just not an easy place for me to be. So to see where God has taken me from and brought me to, and, and, uh, and my story is not done either. And so those pastors that are watching and the last chapter hasn't been written and you may feel like quitting. Um, but get some good people around you. Get some good people around you that uh, can lift your arms up and encourage you. Um, what's uh, what's the old saying that you know? There's a lot of a lot of people can say negative things that can just ruin your day, but one positive word in somebody's life can change the trajectory of your of your future. Um, just somebody believing in you. So. Um, be, maybe become what you want others to be. Um, you know, encourage others and be that positive word in other, somebody else's life. And, and God will bring people into your life to encourage you as well. That's a good word. That's a good word. I love it. I love hearing stories like your story, Dave, because they, they're stories of hope and stories of just how God can turn things in a way that you might not expect, but man, he's so good. He's so good. I want, I want to help people kind of connect with you and maybe connect to, to your world in this whole yeah. Christian media. What are, where, where can we send them? How can they learn more? Uh, a couple of emails. They can go to Dave at faith and family info. Dave at faith and family info. Uh, that's a, a blog where I write uh, posts about various content movies that are coming out and culture and just, um, you know, tools and that kind of a thing for churches. And then secondly, uh, David at advanced team uh, That's my uh, website that just kind of looks into the films and uh, projects that I've worked on in the past. And so if there's anybody that, um, you know, listening today that may need some help, uh, that would be the place to go. David good. at advanced team films.com. So you guys heard the emails there. I'm assuming they could also go to advancedteamfilms.com for more information, faithandfamilyfilms.info. Yep. You could check up information. If you want to write, Dave, uh, you could send them to those emails. Man, this is good. Um, I I'll say, uh, Dave, I've, I've personally seen um, the power of, of Christian media which has been produced with a, with a, a heart for God and for the kingdom mm -hmm. that I've seen that impact people both in the church context, outside of the church context. But when pastors, ministry leaders, and Christians are intentional, prayerful, and strategic, this is a powerful, powerful uh, connection. Um, in, in fact, I, I remember reading in, in the winter edition of the Avail Journal uh, that was this article kind of highlighting the whole Jesus revolution. And you wrote, uh, you wrote this article message in motion, which, which is a great article, by the way, let me mention this to everybody who's watching or listening. If it's your first time, the avail journal, this is a Christian leadership magazine is the best out there. Everybody, it feels good. It looks good. It reads good. You can read articles like, uh, like Dave, Dave's article, the message in motion, everything we're talking about now. And by the way, you can get a year for free on us. Go to availjournal.com, claim your free annual subscription. 
It's on us. We want to put resources in your hands. Would you agree, Dave, that Amen. getting leadership resources is important for leaders? Amen. Absolutely. And uh, the old journal is, is top, top shelf quality. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Man, this has been good, Dave. This has been good. Just hearing, hearing a little bit from your heart. I'd like to close off. Just, just what do you want to leave on, on, uh, on our avail leaders hearts, uh, whether it's a thought, an encouragement, a prayer, what do you want to leave in our hearts? Yeah, I would say this, um, you know, in, in my journey and my experience, it hasn't always been about ability. It's been about availability. So uh, just showing up. Um, um, so many times that uh, I've had an opportunity placed in my, at my, in my lap and I didn't really know what to do, but I'm like, Lord, I'm making myself available. The need is the call and I will step up, but I'm trusting in you to give me the ability to accomplish what I need to accomplish here. And so uh, I would just, Man, rest in that uh, as a pastor, as a leader, whatever you're doing in ministry and in life, um, just show up and be available. And uh, God will take you places just because you're available that you never, ever expect. My life, my life is a, a perfect <laughs> example of, of where I am today and um, where I should be in the natural. That's some good advice from none other than Dave Omgren. Hey, Dave, on behalf of the Avail team, Dr. Sam Chan, Martine Van Tilburg, everybody who works behind the scenes to keep the Avail ship flowing, we just want to say thank you. We want to honor you for your leadership, for what you're doing, what, both behind the scenes and, you know, and in front of the scenes. Thank you for your hard work for the kingdom. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share my heart. Yes, sir. Hey, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Uh, another opportunity to lean in and learn from leaders who are making an impact for the kingdom in the different spheres of influence, including media. Uh, my name is Virgil Sierra, lead pastor of Vertical Church, aka Iglesia Vertical here in South Florida, where we are one church, two languages. And I'm your host for these weekly podcasts at Avail, where we talk about the art of leadership. Thanks for connecting, and we hope to see you next time right here on the Avail podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Avail podcast with our guest, Dave Omgren. You can find out more about Dave online at advancedteamfilms.com and faithandfamilyfilms.info. For more leadership resources, check us out at theartofleadership.com and make sure to claim your free annual subscription of the Avail Journal at availjournal.com. If you'd like to connect with our growing leadership community on Facebook, visit availleadershipconnect.com. As always, I'm your Avail podcast host, Virgil Sierra. Muchas gracias. Thank you for connecting with us to learn the art of leadership here at the Avail podcast. <laughs>